Hawaiian trade winds, sky of endless blue, moonlight on the ocean, good food, good wine, and you. Aloha, and welcome to Great Chefs of Hawaii. Come join us for a taste of paradise as the island's finest chefs explore Pacific Rim cuisine. The first course comes from Gary Streel at the Hawaii Prince Hotel. He has worked for and with Chinese, Thai, French, and Swiss chefs. But he readily admits that he has added to his repertoire by learning home cooking from his staff. Maybe that's where seared and smoked ahi with lychee salsa and ogo wasabi sauce came from. Okay, we're going to be uh, doing a dish today called the seared and smoked ahi. Uh, ahi is right here is a half of a quarter piece, uh, which comes from a fish of about 60 to 80 pounds. It's a yellowfin tuna uh, from local waters here in Hawaii. We're going to make one slice with the grain. What I'm going to do is cut into blocks, they call it. Let's use one piece for now. Now the fish we're going to marinate or paint a little of the pesto on. This is a uh, macadamia nut pesto, which is a basic pesto recipe with macadamia nuts instead of pine nuts. You want to put a healthy portion on it. You can use your hands, paint it on there well. This is a number one grade, which means it has beautiful color and it has some nice fat texture to it also. These are apple wood. We also use uh, mesquite, or uh, in Hawaii, uh, kiabi wood works very well for the smoking. Okay. We fizz a little bit of water on the chips. Very low heat. And we're gonna set the fish. I've coated that a little bit with uh, olive oil. Okay. Unless you have an unusual kitchen, do the smoking outside. Now while that's smoking, I'm just gonna cover that with a little half pan. You don't wanna have an intense heat to it because you don't wanna cook it. We're going to make our relish now, which is going to accompany the dish. This is a lychee relish. Uh, fresh lychee or on the mainland also canned lychee works very well. These are uh, Japanese cucumbers. Red radish for color. the uh, daikon, Japanese radish. Some jicama. Okay. Sweet Maui onion. Touch of sesame oil. This is a uh, mirin, a rice wine vinegar. Okay, and it's a sambal olek, a chili pepper, used uh, very often in Hawaii. We check our fish quickly. What I'm going to do is just turn it one time. And we're going to mix our relish and add a little bit of olive oil. What I have here is a opal basil. It's a purple basil, also raised here in Hawaii, up country. Okay, we're gonna finish with that, and then squeeze the fresh lime juice. One of the garnishing sauces includes ogo seaweed and wasabi. 
course, we start off with wasabi, Japanese style horseradish, some yellow mustard, the chopped fresh algo. This is from Hawaii, from the North Shore of Oahu. A little bit of uh, cilantro. You can use basil, uh, mint works well in there. Okay, this get your paste. I'm gonna add a little bit of shoyu. Okay. As we finish our sauce, I'm gonna be using a, a yogurt. Again, this sauce should have a real a good kick to it. Should have a lot of spice, a lot of heat. The smoked tuna is seared quickly in hot olive oil. Since the fish has such a nice, beautiful red color to it, we're going to have the contrast of the red color on the inside and a nice brown pesto flavor and color on the outside. Again, searing all four sides evenly. going to do with the fish is roll it into the cellophane so that's easier to slice. Spoon our salsa or relish. Again, nice sharp sashimi knife works very well. Again, the cellophane is important because the cooked fish is going to tear if you try to slice it without. And then we're going to spoon our sauces in the front. This is our pesto, again, our macadamia pesto. And you can use a knife or a fork, works well, just to make a little, you're going to spread it a little bit and make a little design, just a little swirl. Purple basil. Otherwise, it's overcooking. It's no a little bit more. That is a trim, well, braco lamb, bone out totally, all the all the fat out, all the bone out. Just leave the the um, little racks bone for uh, for a presentation and to hold it in the plate. I will show you later. A Mediterranean version of ratatouille includes red and yellow bell pepper yellow squash, zucchini, and eggplant, all cut into a fine dice. Mm. 
then, of course, in a very linear dice, what we call brunoise, it's a, a teeny ratatouille, very fine one, because of the cover, the, after cook it, it will be very small. Eggplant julienne is diced. As you see, it need to be smaller because it's, it's a quick sauté. The cooked ratatouille will be stuffed into this unusual product. Although it looks like a hot pepper, it's a mini red bell pepper, which is coated with olive oil, seasoned with salt and pepper, then roasted and peeled. The vegetables are sautéed in olive oil. And then first, the eggplant. Why? Because it's the water will come out very quick. Then here, you go use the other one, then you put a, the zucchini, and the yellow, and the red. A little salt and pepper, in both of them. After a few minutes, the eggplant is combined with the other vegetables. And now, as you see, it's getting better. And that's it. Go be a, a ratatouille you will finish it up with a little bit of onions and tomatoes. The lamb rack is seasoned. The reason we put a little string on is because we want to make a little round, perfect round. First the thing, you put it straight like this, to stir it all around, and then we go finish in the oven. The couscous has been drained and will be flavored with diced parboiled fennel. And then, of course, you do also a little squares. This you cook, cook it in a, a boiling water, with a little salt, of course, and until it's, it's really cooked. Then you cook, uh, slice it up like this. Okay, that's the couscous. Now the couscous, we mix it with the, the fennel. Now with a little, a little teaspoon of uh, curry, no much, because it, otherwise you have a powder, and then we mix it together. After the lamb is seared, it goes into a 500 degree oven for seven minutes Check for medium up. rare. Meanwhile, shallot and garlic are added to the ratatouille. Lightly saute. Again. The ratatouille, after cooking, will be cooled and along with some black olive puree be stuffed into the mini red peppers. It's a, the black, it's a puree of black olives, season it, and, um, and that is the ratatouille, which is the pan out. This is, of course, the taponada that go in, and the ratatouille that go in each pepper. Another inventive side dish is begun with eggplant slices that were wilted in a little olive oil and line a ring mold. The couscous will then be added. And, of course, that one there, like this. And then with a, a coffee spoon, fill it up your uh, couscous. The eggplant cake is warmed in the oven before presentation. Like this, like that. You need to balance on the rosemary and the carrot juice. The sauce is a combination of lamb stock and carrot juice. 
The easiest way to obtain carrot juice is to find a juice bar. Well, it's playing a little. Uh, let me, uh, a little bit more of pepper. And I'll touch a little salt, a little touch of salt. And a little more of the stump of the, um, the uh, uh, rosemary. And we add the, a little touch, just, just a little touch of curry, just a little touch. Then all the flavors blended together. Now, I've got to, our couscous should be done. Now, we did, we did tone because you get hot. Pull it up, right in the middle. The land is rested and is carved for presentation. Now, have it one, and two, and three. And you put it up. Put it in the middle, right there. And then come in the sauce. Right in the top of the meat only.